out in the open tonight, a crime that has sparked protests in the streets, even violence in Knoxville, Tennessee. A young white couple carjacked, raped, and murdered earlier this year, and the suspects, a group of blacks. The question is whether it was a black-on-white hate crime or just a random case of violence. Even though everyone involved in the investigation says, no, it's not a hate crime, the case has now taken on a life of its own, thanks in part to white supremacists. And this video on the Internet, posted by an Aryan blogger, accusing the media of trying to be politically correct by ignoring the story. We sent Rusty Dorn into Knoxville, Tennessee, to bring it all out in the open. Shannon Kristen and Christopher Newsom were in the wrong place at a deadly time. The couple were en route to watch a movie at a friend's apartment in this complex in January. Knoxville police believe they were carjacked, kidnapped, and taken to this house. Both were raped repeatedly. 21-year-old Shannon, a university student, had cleaning fluid sprayed in her mouth. She apparently suffocated after being stuffed into a trash can inside the house. Christopher Newsom, 23 years old, was shot. His body set on fire and dumped by the railroad tracks. We don't know that many details about why this crime occurred. A fingerprint found in the victim's car a few days after the murders led to arrests. Three African-American men and one woman were charged with murder in connection with the killings. Another man is charged as an accessory. But days later, the story, or a version of it, gathered steam on the web. Sites with white supremacist agendas made their own headlines. It was a hate crime, they claimed. But Knoxville prosecutors say, no way. There's no evidence of any kind that a hate crime was involved. That wasn't enough to convince the bloggers. The national news media, they say, spends plenty of time covering white on black crime, but has completely ignored the story here in Knoxville. The story really took off after there were claims that the couple was sexually mutilated. That new twist may have begun with an extreme right-wing blogger, Hal Turner, in New York. He told CNN, quote, sympathetic people, unquote, in Knoxville told him back in February that the young man's genitals and the woman's breasts had been hacked off. He put those details on his website. I can't see any motivation other than hate that would prompt someone to do the things to these white kids that were done by these black perpetrators. Prosecutors insist the mutilations never happened. A terrible crime is charged regardless of some of these, uh, these fantastic uh, reports of mutilation and things which, which aren't true. No more savage black crime! But Turner and others stepped out from behind their computer screens to lead a rally this past weekend in Knoxville attended by white supremacists. A crowd twice as large protested the gathering. And topping our newscast tonight, the family of... As the local media in Knoxville followed the story, one reporter told us she's been receiving hate mail, lots of it. Accusations, says News Sentinel reporter Jamie Satterfield, that she covered up details of the crime and questions about why the national media hasn't picked up on the story. Initially, my response was, you know, don't, don't hit me with your racism. But what I've learned is that just fueled it. Even while we did our interview, she got mail. How many have you received in the last hour? It looks like I've gotten three. All four defendants have pleaded not guilty. Defense attorneys declined to comment on the case, but agreed with prosecutors that the bloggers had hurt both sides. They created a scenario, if true, makes people wonder, well, why wasn't there more coverage or what's going on? Shannon Christian's parents attend every court appearance. The couple don't believe the murders were racially motivated. It's not so straightforward for the Newsoms. They believe it did not start out as a hate crime, but may have ended up that way. Even so, they resent their son's death being used as a propaganda tool by racist groups. I know Chris and Shannon would not want to be a part of that. That is not what they stood for. All four defendants will be tried separately. The first trial won't even begin until May of 2008. Plenty of time for the myths, virtual and otherwise, to grow. Rusty Dornan, CNN, Knoxville, Tennessee. And joining me now to talk about this, the Reverend Ezra Mays, president of the Knoxville chapter of the NAACP. Thanks for being with us tonight. Also, James Edwards, who hosts the conservative radio talk show, The Political Cesspool. And thanks to you as well for being with us. How's it going, Karen? Thank you for having me. 
But James, James, I just want to ask you about the Knox County District Attorney General's office, the special counsel saying there's nothing whatsoever that indicates any hate crime. He also goes on to say there are things that really coincidentally prove just the opposite. So why has this case become a rallying cry among the white supremacists, fringe groups, and even conservative columnists online? Well, I can't necessarily speak for, for people that I don't have any association with, but I'll tell you this, I believe that probably the government officials in Knoxville are concerned with being labeled white supremacists for taking a conservative point of view on this issue. They probably don't want to defy the false gods of political correctness. What you have here, Kieran, is a horribly wicked crime in which two young college students were carjacked, held captive, and raped before being murdered. Now, if that isn't a hate crime, then I don't know, I don't know what is. If found guilty, these perpetrators should face swift justice and the firing squad would be too lenient for him, but I'll promise you this, had the roles been reversed and had the victims been black and the murderers white, this would have been the biggest news story in America on every nightly newscast back in February when this originally occurred. Reverend Mays, do you agree with that, that if this had been reversed racially, we would have heard much more about it? I beg to differ. I believe that it ha had it been reversed racially, you would not have heard anything about it. Oh, come uh, I, on. <laughs> I, 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 believe, I believe that this has received uh, some national attention, and uh, I do not believe that it was a race crime. Uh, I believe that it was a crime that was committed. Um, I am not one to judge. I cannot say guilty or not guilty. I do say that we do feel for the families of those who have lost loved ones, and you cannot be human and not feel sympathetic. Uh, for those who have lost loved ones. Uh, I do not agree with the crime, nor do I believe that it was a hate crime. K Karen, I, I believe there's not a doubt in anyone's mind in America that if the races in this instance had been reversed, that the NAACP would have been howling that this would have been classified as a hate crime. The NAACP never believes that brutal acts of violence committed by blacks against whites is motivated by racial hatred. And certainly, um, you know, the NAACP couldn't provide America tonight with an equivalent random I, act I, of violence I, I, committed I, I, by I blacks against other blacks that can compare to this massacre. All right, well, listen, Reverend Mays, you were at this rally in Knoxville over the weekend. Apparently, some whites were holding up signs saying things like diversity equals death. Aryan groups online have been calling it a rally against genocide. Were you surprised to see, and there are some of the pictures, uh, just how much vitriol there was when it comes to this story? I'm sorry, repeat that question, please. Were you surprised to see, uh, if you look at the rally, you were there, uh, you see uh, the anger, I mean, the, the palpable anger and tension there. Were you surprised to see this? Uh, I was not surprised to see the anger and tension. I was surprised to see uh, the Noxie group come to town and to protest. Uh, but I was not surprised to see the anger and the tension. I was very angry about the uh, crime that had taken place. Uh, I was not angry because it was a racial crime. Uh, nevertheless, I was angry because two young uh, people had been murdered, uh, and that should make anyone angry. So I was not surprised by the anger. I was surprised by the racial slurs that took place uh, during the protest. I, uh, uh, everybody in the city clearly states uh, it was not a racial crime. It is people outside of Cincinnati who are trying to make this a racial crime right. and put I'm sorry, we're out of time, but I, I wish I could uh, let you have a, another word at it, James, but we are out of time. Thanks so much for both of you for your points of view. Reverend Ezra Mays, as well as James Edwards. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you very much. Time now to take a quick business break. The Dow up 14 points, NASDAQ gaining 14, and the S&P closing two points.